Hi everybody, my name's Rebecca and welcome back to My Bookish Travels. I hope the light's okay. I'm trying to film during the sunlight hours, so we'll see how the final outcome of the video is when I go to edit. Today I am going to be doing my wrap-up for the month of February. And again, I ended up reading more than I thought I would. There is one book that I've read during the month that I'm not going to discuss at all because I didn't like it at all. I wouldn't even give it a star rating because I didn't like it at all. <laughs> I actually got rid of the book that I read. So rather than taking time up on things that are of no consequence to me, I am going to focus on the other books that I read. In total though, what I'm going to be discussing are eight books that I did read and went towards my Goodreads goal for the year and let's jump into them. The first book that I finished listening to in February was Angel by Sarah Brienne. Again, this edition was read by Erin Landon, and I really enjoyed listening to this audiobook. It was very short and quick and excellent. Um, again, I'm not going to go into details if they're somewhere in the middle of the series, but if you guys enjoy mafia reads and a little bit more on the gritty realistic side of things, we're starting to kind of see the story start to unfold a little bit more because this is the fifth book in the Made Men series, and I absolutely gave this a five out of five stars. The next book that I read was Real Crime. This one was a little bit different. I actually ended up giving this one star, unfortunately. This was not what I was expecting. I do enjoy listening to true crime, but I feel like this series itself went more for a shock factor than actual getting into the stories. They were looking for that, like you're listening to the first bit of it and you're like, I can't believe this is happening. And then you hear the resolution and you're just like, this, what the heck is happening? So I ended up giving it one star. Just really was not impressed with the actual production itself. Again, I felt it went more for shock value than actual quality of the crime and the resolution to it. So that's kind of how I came about giving that one star. Even my mom, she and I listened to that one together and we both were like on the exact same page for how we were feeling about the actual stories they were sharing. The next book that I read was The Berenstain Bears and The Big Election by Stan and Jan Berenstain. This one I ended up coming across when I was doing some cleaning in my room and I was like, I need to sit down and read this because I completely forgot I owned it. And it's definitely a throwback to my childhood. I loved reading The Berenstain Bears. I will tell you before I say anything else, two out of five stars for this. Normally with children's books, if they're just meh, I normally give them three stars. But with how the story had ended, I just felt like it left as an open ending. It did not actually give me the resolution I was looking for. And I don't think I remember that ever being a thing with the Berenstain Bears. I also feel like with it being like this tiny, that's probably why. But as an adult, I definitely feel like this is not as well written as some of the other Berenstain Bears because, again, in those novels, there's always a really good lesson that you can learn or be taught from them as a child. This one, I just felt like it, it did not end where it needed to end, if that makes sense. The next book that I read was Stunning by Sarah Shepard. I don't even know what number this is in the series, guys. I own all of the Pretty Little Liars books in hardcover. All of the ones prior to this, I've actually given to my friend Maud because she really loves these books. And for me, I just, I, I'm not connecting. Like, I feel like it's a book about girls doing bad things and when they decide to do good things, they end up getting punished and have to do bad things. And... I just, I don't know, I'm not enjoying these stories at all, but 
because I own them all in hardcover first off and second off because of the fact that I'm already this far invested in the story, I want to know how it ends. I don't want to just read a Wikipedia article that tells me everything that happens. I'd rather read it, know that I've read the book, and then I can discuss with people if they ever talk to me about it. Now, I think we've had a few talks about this book so far, but in general, I know she really loves these, but for me, they're just misses. So for that, I am giving it one out of five stars. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. I'm reading more so because I own them and I want to know the resolution. The next book that I ended up listening to was Viadas Lapland's Greatest Heist, and it was narrated by Jenny Rognaby, I think is how you pronounce the last name. This one I ended up giving three out of five stars, and it was more so because the actual story I felt was delving off too much in other directions rather than kind of being like straightforward like I was expecting it to be. For me, I gave it three out of five because I think it is a very interesting story with regards to this actual heist that is still to this day unsolved. For me, I would love to have seen a little bit more detail as to the actual investigations. I think there would have been a little bit more interest in the story in the first episode if it wasn't delving off into more of the geographical locations as well as a lot of history for the area. Usually when it's coming to things like that, I do need to actually physically be reading it because sometimes I need to look at a map because I just can't in my head picture, you know, you turn right here and you see this and it's like, I, I'm i not following you. So I feel like the first episode really knocked a lot of stars off for me because it was really pulling me out of the actual heist and we didn't really get into it till about the second episode and we didn't really discuss it fully, I feel like, for what happened for the heist until the third episode episode and it's only a three episode podcast so for me I felt like I didn't really get the full experience with it and I just found that I was really struggling to follow along for me it just it was a bit of a miss the next book that I read was a Kindle book and that was called Daddy's Worst Nightmare by Jessica Kane and this was a little different than what I thought I was going into. I thought it was going to be like a cute fun short novella about a girl who had stumbled across a boy who was begging in the subway and ended up you know meeting each other 10 years later and he'd always been nearby protecting her and it was that but it was also a little more than that. And it just, it did not work for me. I gave that one star. I actually deleted the book off my Kindle even because I just, it wasn't for me. I feel like there was a lot of controlling and possessiveness to it. I think that there was a lot of um, things that were on more of the negative side that I don't necessarily agree with when I'm reading a novel and just having a character that is as controlling as I found um, his character to be. I just could not fully support what I was reading, so I ended up deleting that novel and being like, nope, it just wasn't for me. The next book that I read was The Princess's Secret Scandal by Natsu Mamose, and that was a Harlequin romance manga, which we all know here on my channel is my guilty pleasure. I gave this five out of five stars. I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. It was fantastic. I loved it. I had so much fun reading it. There were so many different things that took place. I love the art. I love the story. It actually makes me want to see if I can find a copy of the physical book and read that because, again, Harlequin Romance, I should be able to find, like, a random copy at, like, a bookstore or at, like, a library book sale, I'm sure. But it definitely made me want to read more in the series if there's more than one book, which I assume there's more than one book in this series because there's a couple different characters. But it was so good. It's about a girl who is a princess and she ends up is inadvertently carrying the air of a person who died and all of those things. My phone is ringing. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm off the phone. It was just my mom calling. <laughs> um, all right, so where were we? 
she ends up being told that the prince that she is carrying the heir for has passed and that she is being taken back to the country because her child is now the heir of that country and there is a bit of an issue on the plane and they end up on a desert island and the story continues from there. It was just really good. I really enjoyed it. I think that the manga artist did such a phenomenal job kind of transitioning the story over into manga format. We know that I have read some really bad ones, but we also know that I have read some good ones. When I say we, I mean Goodreads because Goodreads follows all of my reading habits to the T. I just really enjoyed this one and I do recommend if you guys are looking to read one of them, this one's a really fun one to read because it just, it's got romance, action, adventure, it's got some mystery, it's got royalty, it's just all in all it's good. And the final book that I read in the month of February was The Earl and the Fairy Volume 1 by Mizutani, and the story and art is by Ayoko. So I think they kind of did it together because the story and art came from Ayoko, but the original concept for the story came from from Mizu Tenny, and this was just so much fun reading it again. I have read the full manga series previously. I'm reading through it again because I really enjoyed it, and I'm kind of on the fence. Maybe you guys can convince me, should I get a membership to Crunchyroll? Because they have the full manga, sorry, they've got the full anime on Crunchyroll, and this is kind of taken from the anime and it's been put into manga format so I know the first time I read through it didn't really have the full story like it had some gap spots that I found but I definitely gave this one five out of five but let me know in the comments below do you guys if you have a Crunchyroll account and you do have a subscription to watch all of the anime on Crunchyroll is it worth it? Probably if you have it, you're like, yes, 100%, but I don't, and I'm like trying, I'm just on the fence, I'm borderline, I'm like, is it worth it to spend money to have a subscription to another service? I'm I'm on the fence, guys. Maybe you could help convince, because I do really want to watch The Earl and the Fairy, and I think that supporting a site that you do have to pay for is good, because that means you're supporting the actual work legally. So let me know if I should. Anyway, The Earl and the Fairy, it's about our main character who can, she's actually a fairy doctor. She can talk to fairies. And this mysterious person who says that he is related to the Blue Knight, who kind of is like the king of the fairy realm. And he needs her help. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of intrigue going on. There's um, some slight romance I'm feeling. In this one, I'm not going to, like, go into details because I know I've read the full series, but in this one, you can definitely, like, read into some of, like, the romance is starting, and I think the author is doing, like, a really good job of, like, slowly integrating um, feelings into the story, and I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Anyway, this is the last book that I've read in the month. I was hopeful to finish Given by Nandy Taylor, but I just, my eyes were too tired so I couldn't finish it before the end of February. Anyway, guys, let me know if you've read any of the books that I have spoken about today, and if you have what you thought of them. And the other thing is, if you haven't, what would you say would be, like, your top book? Like, out of everything you read in the month, what would you put as, like, the best book of the month that you read? I will talk to you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you then. Bye.